He took it home already? Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Well, son of a... <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk about helmets in a future yeah. episode. Wait, are we, are we already rolling? Yeah, we're rolling. Oh, hey. You want to intro it or should I intro it? Uh, you already started with like that energy. Okay. Like, oh, hey! And What's up, you... Aaron Softers? Welcome back to the latest episode of the Not So Round Table. As you can see, we're still at our Not Round Table. George and I have brought in a variety of the gear that we've used over the years and really m most of our most recent stuff. Uh, this is episode 143. If you missed our prompt in the last episode, make sure you head back to that one. Uh, 142 is really uh, kind it's of a, a very good informa informational episode. We had a lot of fun filming it. That prompt was, you know, kind of how how do you set up your airsoft gear? We've at 140 episodes in now, we, we may have not have touched on a lot of the questions that very early on a lot of people had. And we did a couple gear specific episodes, but it's been a while. Our tastes and gear setups have changed a little bit. And so we thought we'd take this opportunity in this episode to show you a little bit about um, gear options, how we set them up, uh, and uh, maybe help you make some informed decisions about how to set up your gear uh, or how not to run gear at all. It's completely yeah. up to so, you. So one of the key elements that we'll do on this episode is we're going to talk more <laughs> about theory rather than specific items. You know, um, although we, if you have we a could, question about yeah, 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 yeah. But we, I mean, we could sit here for days and talk about this specific yeah. rig or that specific yeah. plate carrier. We're more uh, going to talk about the concepts yeah. of how to set up something yeah. and why to set it up. Mm -hmm. I actually have not brought in a complete plate carrier setup like you have. I have. Um, Matt is um, very diligent, and when he builds something, he has it ready to go for all of his purposes. Versus myself, I'm more focused on having something, a piece of gear that meets the role, meets right. the need. Right. So um, we'll go over those. But um, really quick, how about we just give a rundown of your rig and why we set it up, or why you set it up the way that you did? Sure, I'll bring it into into frame here. Yep. Here, let me move. Oh, here, right, fine. <clears throat> just set it on top of that. So, uh, depending on how you uh, choose to play airsoft, you might have a variety of, of roles that you're trying to fill. Uh, over the past couple of years, I think we've done more milsim stuff than anything else, and so my gear is set up to make me maybe the most useful in a milsim game. Uh, this is probably a little bit overkill for an indoor uh, an indoor game, and that's why we're going to talk about scalable gear in in just a moment. So. Um, so on here, I've got a pretty basic plate carrier. I've got it sized correctly. So that's the, the biggest thing when you're buying a plate carrier is making sure that it's fitting you properly. So George and I went through this and made sure that you know both of the, the, uh, the front and back are, are meeting my body in the way that they should. I made sure that the, the shoulder straps were comfortable. Uh, and other than that, uh, on the front, you know, I've always been a big proponent of, and maybe you don't know this if you're just tuning in, but I, I like to run one vest and then have it fit a variety of, uh, of panels, panels of, of different or... situations and things like that. So right now this is set up for M4 magazines. Um, there's three here, and then I usually will also pair this with a, a gun belt, and my gun belt also carries two M4 magazines. This, uh, because of this front shingle, can be swapped out to carry different magazines, SMG mags or larger magazines if I'm running my 417. Um, and uh, the big thing here on my vest is I have found that gear on my side, so anything that's down along my the side of my body gets in the way. And it constantly is rubbing my arms and I hate it. And while for me, a plate carrier that had extra storage space on the sides would be great. Uh, I found it more of an annoyance than something I was using practically. So, in order to give myself a little bit more space, I went with a front panel that had some storage space in the front and a dangler or a, a waste bag mm -hmm. or whatever name that, that each company sells these as, uh, as just an extra pocket to keep things in. Um, other than that, you know, plenty of room for a big old patch or some, you know, some... Uh, some theme patches and things like that. And to give you an example of how I might, you know, swap out the panels on the front, uh, this is something you made, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, this is for SMGs, so when I'm running an MP5, I can string four MP5 magazines across the front. And if I'm using this, I'm probably indoors, and it's probably CQB, so I don't need all of the extra storage. Um, so I forego all of that extra just so that I can run this in a more slick fashion with just that. Real quick, just so that we're not spending the whole day on one plate carrier. Uh, this is my back panel. There are a ton of different ways to do back panels, whether you go with a, a dedicated pack uh, or you decide to run it slick and run a backpack over your plate carrier. Uh, I decided a to... a zip-on. Or a zip-on. Something or. I like about this specific vest is that it allows me the ability to zip on and off 
different panels. So I've got one back panel that'll hold a helmet if I'm doing a longer engagement milsim event or an expandable backpack to carry more. This one's non-expandable. I keep a first aid section in the back. I keep, you know, food, snacks, extra magazines, uh, gas, um, Stuff. Uh, or like grenades, like it's just a general stuff it. And then uh, this one also carries a uh, water bladder, which I have piped up over my shoulder to the front of the vest. If you ever are going to do water on your vest and you plan on being in a dusty environment, something with a mouth cover is necessary, unless necessary. you like tasting dirt. Yeah, yeah, absolutely necessary. Oftentimes, because you're playing in you know, abandoned facilities and stuff that, you know, you just don't want your mouthpiece Very true. rubbing on stuff on the ground. That's, I mean, that, that's really my basic, uh, basic plate carrier yeah. setup. Um, one thing as like Matt as a player is like he said, he likes to have, is, is, he likes to have one setup to kind of rule them all. And if you're an airsofter or somebody who also likes to do um, tactical mm -hmm. firearms training or anything like that, having a plate carrier to meet all your needs is a very good option. It is better to spend a lot of money on one rig mm -hmm. than a small amount of money on a bunch of rigs. Now the drawback for that though is if I wanted to go with an all green setup, this vest doesn't do that. Correct. But or if I wanted to run yeah. uh, multicam black or a black setup, this doesn't do that either. Correct. So in that case, I'd have to either change the rig completely, which is or some examples you've brought, or, or you know, buy a new vest altogether. So. so one of the questions we get a lot is, you know, and at least I see this a lot on the field, and, I, and I'm going to use a few, I mean, there's a few people who kind of created this trend of basically a plate carrier in Airsoft Yes, it does provide some padding for you from getting shot in the chest, but if you're playing outdoors and stuff like that, that's not as big of an issue as it is indoors. Yeah. And a lot of people have gone to the plate carrier to achieve a certain look. Oh, yeah. And um, one thing, and, and that was prevalent a few years ago. Um, I mean, I'll say that there's some there's some influencers who really kind of drove this home of like you've got to wear a plate carrier because it looks cool. Like, yeah. and there's they nothing, do look cool. Yeah, and they do look cool. Yeah. Um, you know, and with the dummy plates, they're not that heavy. Mm -hmm. But then with the dummy plates, they're really not serving a purpose for you in a sense that you're not stopping bullets. Right. I mean, so, it is carrying a plate, but that plate exactly. is still there. So there are some people, and you see this all the time, who are wearing a plate carrier, and they're bigger dudes, they're, or they don't have a lot of stamina, or they're smaller dudes, and it doesn't fit right, mm -hmm. and they're getting tired faster, they're carrying way too much stuff because they have to feel that way, and it actually hinders their airsoft experience. Right, because then you're really not getting any of the practicality of this. Correct. Uh, other than carrying more stuff than you really need. Because let's be honest, aside from the magazines, there really isn't a whole lot I need on this vest. Yes. It's a lot of creature comforts. So, I mean, one of the things that's become very popular these days, and it's all, you know, you are running a, a Haley Micro Rig. Yep. There's a lot of other options on the market where you basically have this concept of you can transition what you're using. So you could switch this to your 417 pouches, you can right. switch it to MP5 pouches, you can switch it to MP, M4 pouches, and you have that ability to be able to just change your platform. People mm -hmm. really like that now. That is the new craze, everybody's into it and it's probably going to be something that's a mainstay for a while. Which I hate, by the way, my 417. I know, that's yeah, it's, it, it, is, it is kind of a pain. Um, but the concept is still the same, is trying to keep a form factor that's small, that you can clip onto a plate carrier, or in this case, use as a chest rig, so that way, you know, you can go to the games, and if you're carrying less stuff, you're going to play longer. Mm -hmm. That's just fact. If you're, if you're scaling it up on a plate carrier and it starts just building up, it's gonna be more weight for you, and then you have to carry more water on you and it just kind of can build. And yeah. my suggestion would be, if you're having a hard time finishing your games or anything like that, right. is to maybe switch to a setup similar to this. So all this is, is a bunch of Haley strategic items. So it's a D3CR with a back panel. And, this is where your shoulders and you just, are. And you just put it on your shoulders. So it does everything you want to do. It has a backpack for you built in. And you can run water in this. And you can run water. There is a hydro in there right now. And then you can carry up to four magazines, and you can carry grenades, every pistol yeah. mags, everything you want. Mm -hmm. And this is so lightweight that you can run this setup and be very calm, perfect all day. So now even, you, okay, so this has dummy plates in it. And I'd say even carrying almost the exact same amount of stuff, this is at least half the weight yes. saved. Well, it doesn't have any magazines in it. Right, but, but my, my point is like, you, you, you've already eliminated a majority of the bulk and weight simply by going to a chest rig and backpack setup. Yeah, I mean the main less the lesson I'm preaching with this, and this is something that uh, Ethan Lovell pointed out in his comment was that he lives in Florida. It's 90% of the year it's unbearably hot. 
So he runs a Haley D3CRM micro, which is what Matt had on the panel there, with a Haley flat pack set up in a similar situation like this. So he's just running the minimalistic gear to be able to do what he wants. Right. Um, and he says in uh, in the winter, in the short winter, he runs a Ferro Concept Slickster with the micro rig attached to it. So basically, he has a plate carrier he adds on when it's when he has when he wants to not be as hot or you know right, you know right, what I'm right. Trying to go with and the slip Slickster is a fantastic vest. Yes, there. I mean, that's what's great is now there's so many options on the market to do this kind of clip on clip off setup, mm -hmm. whether it's Mayflower or Ferro Concepts, a Spiritus. Um, you know, Haley's even LBX, LBX has, has a whole the, bunch the, of front panels. Yeah, LBX has some great <clears throat> options. They're just their buckles are not the same compatibility, but they do have some new stuff that we saw at Shot Show that will be compatible, mm -hmm. which is kind of nice. So, the whole point of what we're trying to drive home here is that if you are having trouble finishing a game, a Milsim game, whatever, right. switch to something lighter. Right. And you don't have to go with the backpack either. I think the rig that you showed there. Uh, I ran this is Sans backpack. So this is just a set of uh, shoulder straps as an H configuration. So you can do, I'd say, 90% of airsoft games without ever having to worry about a backpack, uh, a back panel, a plate carrier. You can do something as simple as a chest rig. I Even ran this at tiny. American Mill Sims game, this exact rig with just M4 mags and MP5 mags. This exact with a little, with a belt set up, and that's it. Mm -hmm. I didn't run a hydro or anything like that. And if you're asking, well, what do you do with your water? Make sure you prehydrate correctly, right. and if you prehydrate correctly, you shouldn't need water on you at all times. Yes. Now there was sometimes I wish I had water, and I did bring a bottle of water with me and I threw it in a pocket. So well, I mean, with that, it also gives you the ability of throw on a backpack. Correct. Like if, if you, I mean, if you if want you to have hydro to, on you, just yeah. put on a backpack. You know it's, exactly. It's, yeah. So um, you know that's something to really head home if you're having trouble fin fin finishing Milsim games. Scale down your kit. Maybe focus, you're in a BB game, you're not in a real gun environment, you don't have to worry about carrying hard, heavy plates right, with you. Right. So sometimes that's what I would suggest. Now, if you are one of the, you know, if you want to keep something that does that for you, that's perfectly fine too. There's nothing wrong with it as long as you're happy with what you're running. So let's say, for example, someone's like not sold on the interchangeable shenanigans that we've got going on here. They don't want a, a back panel, they don't want a front panel that's modular, they don't want to do this whole setup. Can we talk about this, this style? Is, this is one of my favorite rigs, and it was created for a specific reason. And I don't, you can, this, ignore the rig, because the rig is custom, but you can- but this, this style. You so can build this rig yeah. with, with all the stuff that we have right. here at Evic. So all this is, <laughs> <My we'll> belt's <laughs> your belt's falling off. Do you want me to put your belt over here? No, cool. So this rig was designed, and I have the gun here. So shoulder straps. This rig was designed for use with this gun. And all it is, is in each of these compartments, another drum mag. So this is basically to meet the requirements for American Milsim Games, which requires you that you can't just take BBs on the field and load the drum magazine. So this is a heavy gunner rig. Mm -hmm. Its only purpose is to carry everything on your front. Mm -hmm. There's nothing on the back. I added one of my danglers that was lying around. It looks kind of weird. Now someone might to. assume that a small rig like, like this gives up storage capacity completely, but that's really not the case. The side wings have a ton of space and you can get pouches that give you a ton of storage space without impeding your side to side movement because it really is only just off center of your body as opposed Correct. to being underneath your arm. So it's still very reachable and easy to get to. Correct. Um, and I was able to run this rig all day, no issues. Um, and it's carrying a lot of weight on it. You know, two drum mags are heavy. I was able to carry grenades in one, right. water in another. So, you know, it definitely gives you a lot of options. I think I ran this with a soft armor underneath that wasn't attached to it. I literally just threw it over the soft armor right. just for a look. But you know, you have all sorts of options available to you to do cool stuff like this. And because gear is all scalable, you can really just combine them kind of in any way. Yeah, I mean, um, we ourselves, I think, on this entire table don't have anything that's referenced to Molly or Powell's webbing. But you can build this setup with a simple rig. Um, right. you, know, you can go with a tactical tailor rig. There's a bunch of, or a, a condor rig. I was going to say, you can buy everything here as a condor a Condor, uh, TT, build it Mayflower. for less than 100 yeah. bucks. Yeah, you can build a lot of this stuff to do this objective for yourself. Right, right. Um, and if you run a heavy gunner, I highly, highly suggest switching to a chest rig. You're already carrying a gun that is heavy. Unless you're Alphonse, and then you can just... Yeah, well, Alphonse is just, you know, yeah. Alphonse. So, yeah. 
Um, unless you're him. Yeah. <laughs> and even he runs a chess rig, I think. No, he runs a play carry. Does service. he? Because he runs an air tank. Uh, well, yeah, he runs an air tank. So. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah. Air tank. Yeah. So, you you know, if you're running a, a Polar Star or HPA setup, then you have to obviously think about having an air tank then, because right. then. Wow, you get into a whole new realm. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe not so much anymore because uh, both of the top HPA companies are now coming out with uh, gas stocks that sure. are in buffer tubes that look awesome and function really well. So that kind of maybe that's not such a, a strong argument anymore, like having to have a hose and a tank. Um, so moving on from there, do we want to talk about scalability with some other things, or do you have? Yeah, uh, no, I think the belt is. Um, let's talk about. We talked about this. If you have any questions about this, leave a comment in the section below. We can give you a little bit more suggestions, details. If you have more questions on the gun, we'll talk about that towards the end of the episode. Yeah. All right, let's talk about belts. So speaking about scalability, this is uh, my battle belt, and this is George's battle belt. Now, a battle belt or a war belt uh, or any sort of belt isn't necessary in airsoft, but it gives you a huge amount of real estate that you wouldn't otherwise be using, and gives you the added advantage of being able to run it independent of any sort of chest setup. So I can go into a CQB game, or even you know a more leisurely game than a, than a standard like milsim game or or something like that, and just run a belt and have a lot less uh, weight on my body, a lot more freedom of motion, and I really haven't given that much up. So on my, um, on my belt setup, this is an inner and outer belt setup, and these have become real popular in the last couple years. I'd say previously you really just had the one kind of padded outer belt that went over your existing clothing, um, and while those could support a lot of weight, they really didn't tie into your clothing. So sometimes on your draw of your sidearm or trying to pull a magazine, you'd lift your entire belt and then that would you know, cause a problem when you're trying to engage somebody. So the, uh, the inner and outer belt system is really nice because you can use one, the inner belt to loop through your pants and then that is connected to your belt, which is really nice. And you can get inner and outer belts for not a whole lot of money. Eagle Industries makes some great ones. Ronin Tactics and, and G-Code also make good ones. Um, this one's set up pretty easily. I've got a couple uh, M4 mag pouches because that's where I use this belt the most often is with my M4. Some pistol mag pouches up front. I've got a dump pouch, which honestly, as I've kind of developed in playing airsoft, I find myself dumping magazines in a dump pouch far less often. I find myself re-indexing my magazines when they're empty uh, instead of instead of just tossing them in the dump pouch. And I really just use my dump pouch for anything I need to pick up on the field. Or if I need to grab and go like a bunch of uh, uh, smoke grenades or something like that, yeah. we'll head back to the FOB and grab those. And our, our favorites, because we both actually, I was turned on to these well before we started carrying the Tactical Taylor Fight Light mm -hmm. ones. And I gotta say, I've tried a lot of dump pouches mm -hmm. over the years. This is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Being able to roll up, be small, it's like the perfect and form not factor. Be like flat yeah, it's huge. not like huge like some of the other ones. This, in my opinion, is the best mm -hmm. dump pouch mm -hmm. out there, and it's not going to break the bank. Right. Uh, next to that, I've got a, an IFAC, which is, well, which is not necessary at all, really really in airsoft but i happen to use this belt also when we go to the range and stuff so True. i have this built out as a as a full ifac i've got a tq on the back there uh no reason to, to go into anything that's in it but suffice it to say you could put anything here uh an extra admin pouch uh george has also got a first aid pouch on the back there uh but you could put anything general purpose back here anything you would be you know needing on the field Man, mine's empty most of the time yeah yours is at, um so his is a quick quick release meaning that if he pulls this up he can actually un mm -hmm. it the and get thing. access to it um mine is just mounted uh the reason that mine is mounted is i don't keep any life saving if I'm using it in a real situation, in terms of going to the range, stuff like that, I don't put anything in here that I need to get access to right away. It would be carrying band-aids or right. stuff like that. And I know in that kind of situation, I could just literally rip off my belt really quick and get access yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, everything else, like a tourniquet, is in the front, or you know, battle dressing I'd put in one of my elastic pouches on the front, right. or so somewhere where I can get additional access. CQ. Yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> One that, is none, and two, you know, is, two well, is one. You know, anyway. <laughs> uh, I sacro... Um, I, we, he has a soft taco in order yeah. to so that the holds your Odin, in, right? Ninety percent of the time, this holds my Odin. Yeah, but it also works incredibly well for quick games to just throw Go a bottle games. of water in there. Yep. So if I don't have my plate carrier on with a full hydro setup, throwing a bottle of water in there that I can just run around with and drink from on the fly is fantastic. And this is honestly, I would have never looked at this pouch until you suggested it. Uh, I don't think I suggested it. When we were talking about the Stuff It 
oh. the front of rigs, I saw the advantage of that expandable yeah. large pouch and the HSGI one kind of fit the same role and it could be belt mounted. So I really like that. And I've got like an extra elastic just in case I have like an additional multi-tool or I don't know, a glow stick or a Slim Jim. <laughs> And then on onto the holster, Long boy gang. <laughs> onto the holster really quick. Yeah, we both have switched to. We've yeah. Mm -hmm. We've switched to the Safari Lance to setup. Um, you're using a MC Kydex holster. Yes, this is uh, an MC for Kydex for my SPO one. SPO one. Mm -hmm. So, I have to say, like I was a G Code fan for a very long time with the RTI setup. Mm -hmm. I still have one rig that uses it, and it's a very good system. There's mm -hmm. nothing to dock, but I do believe that the Safari Land QLS system is better. And if you're wondering why we're talking so much about why we like this system, allow us to demonstrate. George, can I borrow your holster so I can run a Glock? Sure. Thanks, man. Amazing. I can run a Glock now. And uh, George can run my SP01. So I know you've got a couple different war belt setups. I've got a couple couple different war belt setups. I have so a bag of Kydex mm -hmm. for, for every type of firearm or airsoft pistol right. that I have. It ranges, right. I have a literally about, probably about six of these QLS things. Mm -hmm. I've actually been able to mount them to former G-Code holsters oh, yeah. and yeah. former um, uh, off the grid concepts holsters. Right, okay. So it does make it so I don't lose these holsters that I'm switching to the system, mm -hmm. which is nice. And it means you only have to build one load bearing setup for all of your different airsoft secondaries. And that's huge because that means less money spent having to do all this all over again. And I mean, I still did it. <laughs> the reason, so the reason I, I like the QLS over the G code. It's not a knock on the RTI setup. I just found that it locks better mm -hmm. and it doesn't move around from side to side or lift up as much when you're drawing mm -hmm. as their holsters do. Just personal preference. Everybody has something that they love and, and they, they, um, they, they like. So yeah. it's, it's just whatever we feel is the best for ourselves. Yeah, and if you were uh, also, if you were curious to know what well, we're both uh, mounting them to. Actually, this we're, is the QLS we're, receiver, and I think we're both using the UVL I haven't mid done rod. I haven't done the Q, the really cool idea you have, where you basically you repurposed an old. I think that was I don't know what that was from, but you took it from something else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You weaved it through there, and it basically mounts and it kind of rides your thigh, mm -hmm. so that way it doesn't bounce around right. as much. So I, I took a UBL mid ride. We both use the mid ride. Ryan, who's uh, on the channel all the time. Use one of those low righty boys because he likes to draw from his knees. Um, one thing I wanted to touch base upon uh, about so Matt and I we have a very yeah. similar setup. I just have some these pouches here, which are mostly just for carrying smoke grenades or grenades on both sides, to kind of more of a utility factor. But what's interesting is so um, with the inner and outer belts, I've experimented with both. So I've experimented with the style that uh, Eagle Industries has, which basically the only difference is your inner belt is a hook Velcro and your outer belt is a loop Velcro. I honestly saw it, when I first saw it, I go, wow, that's a great idea. I don't know why everybody else is doing it the other way. Then I tried it and I realized that having the hook Velcro on this is actually very annoying. Um, to me, you, you find yourself catching on it a little bit more than that. So I do think having the inner belt be the loop style or soft Velcro style similar to the G-Code is, in my opinion, better. Yeah. I, 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 and that's from trying it. The thing I liked about the Eagle Industries belt, though, is, as you can see here, my tacos are actually not Moly mounted. Oh, interesting. My belt, mine are Velcro mounted. Even though the Eagle is Molly and Pal is compatible. Correct, but the Eagle, because it has the loop on the inside, you can actually use these and they'll hook to it. And just Velcro. All it I did was, mind. and this is something you can, you get some Velcro, you can basically make your own, you can have your mom make it for you. Just really simple. All I did was just take two pieces of loop Velcro. You can even staple them together if you wanted sure. to. And you just basically have them together and then it kind of holds the pouch in place. Yeah. And yeah. what I like about this is if I'm running a game where I want to have access to a pistol, I can put this on. If I'm not, then what's the point of having it on? I can actually put another M4 pouch on there if I want to very quickly. I don't have to oh. weave it through my molly, which I don't like to do. Yeah, raw and fingers. There yes, it it, I mean, raw fingers, it, it does hurt. So that's just a little side note I wanted to talk about. So one of the things I did when I first started playing Airsoft, and, and playing Airsoft to the degree that I was like, okay, well, I want to know, you know how I should be setting up my vest or how should I be running my gear? And I remember watching countless videos of how other dudes set up their vests and their belts. And ultimately, 
these are all meant to be suggestions kind of based on how we play, but really the only way that you're going to know what works best for you is to try it. Yes. Move your pouches around, try different belt and vest setups, see what works for you and the style of play that you have and the platform that you're running. This is what works well for me, and that's what works well for George. And the only way we discovered those things is by going out and playing with them. So, this is what, like, like Matt said, this is what works for him and myself, and we have very similar taste in how we set up something. Um, I basically have this belt set up, so if I go to the range, and I, or if I go CQB, and I can just use it as the belt without the right. plate carrier. Right. That is my thought process. There are other people who literally just want to have it all in one, and they just basically throw on their plate carrier, and they have everything. So a good example is our mutual friend Miguel. Um, he actually doesn't run a belt set up like this at all. At all. He will just run something to hold his pants up. Just a I basic. doesn't even run a belt anymore. Well, you know, regardless. And he just has his plate carrier on, and his plate carrier will have pouches on his side. Right. Now, here's the thing. That doesn't bother him because he doesn't have to get access to anything on his lower line. That's so true. He but he also doesn't use a pistol. He doesn't use a pistol, yeah, but like yeah. that's the thing is if the main reason that people started using the elastic setups or the, the low profile setups was so that way they can get access to their second line. Right. But if you don't have a second line, and if you prefer the other way and right. be able to stack your, you know, just have it all just donned off and don your plate carrier and have everything on it, that's an option too. Right. Don't stray away from that. Some people may not mind it if their arms are kind of more at their side in certain situations or whatever. So again, it's whatever. Don't just replicate other people's setups and expect you to like it. To have the same, yeah. yeah the try same it. Results, you yeah. know, like so. For example, I tried the inner belt, outer belt that's similar to the. Eagle industry style with the yeah. loop on that, and I found okay, I don't like it because mm -hmm. the the hook Velcro bothers me when you hit it with your skin, because it does. Yeah. It's hook Velcro. Yeah. So, you know, to each their own. Everybody has their own preferences. Now, in this video, we've really only talked about kind of what you're wearing on your person, other than BDUs, and there's a whole lot more that goes into you know gear and setup. You know, what do you wear for face pro and as a helmet, and what do you like for gloves and belts and footwear and all those things. And if you guys wanted us to do another insert episode uh, talking about the rest of those things, we would absolutely love to do that. But we need you guys to you know, give us a little bit of input. If you'd like to see that, uh, it won't be the next one because we already got a, got a prompt ready for you for that one. But, yeah, but uh, um, I think it's yeah, worth... if, if you want us to talk about footwear, if you want us to walk, talk about head setups or comm setups, we, we, we would be happy to share our knowledge. It's just a question of if you guys want to hear that. Matt and I could ramble about this for hours. Literally. We're, this is the long video, and we didn't realize how long it was until we had to stop and pause the camera for the, <laughs> to redo. So. And, you know, uh, it's also uh, um, a point that um, one of our users submitted, um, and it's uh, Reshiram9001. Hopefully okay. I didn't butcher your name too much. And he runs an Alice belt setup and a Chicom vest and a canteen. It's cheap. Use you know usable for historic kits and is durable, so it'll probably outlast his interest in airsoft. Yeah. And that's Interestingly, good. the Alice system is what started it all. Like yes. that was the first modular mm -hmm. carrying system. Yeah, and it's I mean it has its disadvantages. It has its advantages. Its advantages is it's cheap. It's, it's readily cheap. available. You can, you can go find any surplus store. Yep. And maybe it's a little bit heavier than some of the yeah. modern stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you don't mind it, and if you're just rocking like a Chicom vest with it that can hold you know, three or four magazines and, uh, you know, some grenades, then if you're happy with it and it's cheap, you can definitely have a good time with that. So yeah. don't, don't ever shy away from um, being able to look at the past for those kind of things. I think that's one thing that, you know, Matt and I are more focused on um, when we build our airsoft setups. We're also thinking about our range setups and being able to do other things with it. And also, right. you know, let's be real, you also want to look cool. I mean, like, oh, that, that's, that was that, like 100 percent. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that that's yeah. airsoft. You want to look, it, it is important to look cool sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. You know, but that's um, why I wear cries because <laughs> they're more effective. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the looking cool. Yeah. Uh, the UF pros, though, are yeah, really I was gonna good. say, like, there are there are more effective camos for less money. It's just, I, I love cry, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't get off that train. I'm on it and I'm riding it till I die. Okay, he's crying, um, die, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Try I think with that, you know, there's really not, not a whole lot left to, to touch on. Uh, if you guys have any specific questions, uh, we monitor the comments. Uh, as much as we can, so we'll try to answer them in the comment section. If you guys had something specific you wanted to know about, maybe some gear that we showed off here, uh, or maybe a, a question about how uh, we might suggest setting up a specific uh, type of gear for a specific loadout. I mean, um, yeah, the, the heavy rig uh, loadout that I showed you, it was me looking of going like how, like I was gonna run a, that LMG, 
and I was going to be like, okay, we're going to run it at Copperhead. How do I run it? I've never yeah. ran one before. Yeah. Okay, so what do I need to, and I started looking at my options yeah. and decided to make my own option, and it works. But you can, you know, that's something I never thought of before well, until I, I had that challenge. I find it interesting, too. Like, I've, I've never had to run a squad automatic weapon or an LMG or any of that. And my, in my mind, I'm, I've always thought, like, oh, I've got an LMG. It's got a box mag. I don't need more magazines because I've got this box on there. But clearly, you had to think about, I'm going to be in the field. I won't have time to, to bring a bag of BBs or even be allowed it at that event. It was against the rules to be right. able to just sit there with a bottle of BBs and be able to load the magazine. Right. The rules specifically state for AMS that you have to be able to change your magazines out. Right. So, so then I had to carry extra magazines. Yeah. And, that's, and that's not something I would have ever considered having never run that platform. So uh, well, I actually I learned something... Today, hey, I learned and I, I learned it beforehand, and you know it is definitely one of the underrated pieces of rig to or kit to build is a LMG setup. Yeah, it you completely have to change of how you set something up. Full auto fun time. It is so easy to make a rig for an AR. It is not easy. That's because everybody makes gear for ARs. <laughs> it is not yeah. easy, and as you know this, it is not easy to make something for a 762 by 39 setup or a. Uh, sniper rifle setup or an HM, uh, you know, heavy machine gun or LMG setup. Maybe yeah. for a future episode, we'll come back when we do the next gear thing. Let's try to set up like an AK rig. An AK, just, AK just to, I think AK is pretty easy is actually. It? I think AK is just more of along the lines of focusing on a chest rig setup right. versus um, a plate carrier setup. I was gonna say like okay. let's bring in like uh, Shades's party harness to oh, show that's off. A, yeah. Maybe some alternative. Yeah, no, and we sell that rig. The the that was the Tas Tasmanian Tiger. Tiger. Yep. Yeah, they, that chest rig for AKs is like yeah. So maybe we'll gold. maybe we'll show that off because uh, AKs are also popular, and we're not forgetting about you, even though you guys use the inferior platform. Crickets. Now then, let's talk about next month's prompt because that is quickly approaching, and you guys have a uh, here. Move your. Uh, some discussion to, to have. Ooh, that, ooh, that will put a gun up here so we can talk about guns briefly. So since we're on the topic of kind of George and I's interest in how we set our stuff, uh, our stuff up and maybe how that would pertain to you as an airsofter, we're giving you another prompt for March of how you set up your airsoft guns. What kind of accessories do you like? How uh, do you like to paint them? Do you like to paint them? Do you run an optic? Do you run a sling? Why do you do those things? Comment in the section below about what the way that you set up your airsoft guns and also give a justification for why you do it. Saying it looks cool is a perfectly adequate reason to put it on. I mean, half the things we do in airsoft is because it looks cool. Yeah, why did I paint this? Because it looks Because cool. it looks cool. <laughs> Yeah. That's it. That's yeah, the no, only exactly, reason. Exactly. So, uh, so there's your prompt. In the comment section below, let us know what you run, why you run it that way, and next month we'll pick up the conversation, maybe show you one or two rifles of our own, and uh, kind of the decision-making process that we went through to set those up. Okay. Thank you guys for tuning in. As you can tell, we could ramble on this for hours. If you, again, want us to talk about anything else gear-related, Matt and I would be more than happy to answer your questions or talk to you about footwear, comms, helmets, face pro, uh, ear, eye pro, uh, a lot of experience with eye pro we have. Yeah. Uh, I've stuck with the same awful eye pro forever. I have like three sets of turbo fans and I can't figure out one I like the best. Huh. Like one's really loud, one's really quiet, one fogs more than the other. It's, it's unreal. Like, a conversation for another time. Yes. Thanks guys for tuning in. We'll see you later. Hey, that's Indiana Jones. We were just filming Indiana Jones. <laughs>